first song we forty three.
we're so thankful once again, Lord, for this day and this afternoon that we've been able to come together and fellowship together along with studying your word and worshiping you. We're so joyful over the, this day and what we've been able to do. We thank you for allowing us to live in a country where we can do so without persecution. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for us from the sin of your only son that is sick. And we're so thankful for, for his actions showing us how he'd have us to live in the love, giving us a path to follow, and then to lead himself up to a cruel death on the cross for our salvation. And we pray, Lord, that our lives will, will glorify you and glorify Lord Jesus' name in all that we do in this earth. We pray as we go through the rest of this day that you'll continue to be with those that weren't here with us. We pray that whatever their ailments, whether physical or mental, that they will be able to return to us in this morning as well. We pray, Lord, that you will forgive us if we fall short. Give us the wisdom and the knowledge to, to prevent us from falling short. Pray that you'll give us the strength and the wisdom to forgive those who trespass against us. For we know that without forgiving others that you can't forgive us of our sins. We ask all of this in our Lord and Savior Jesus' holy name. Amen. Next song is 514. Five hundred fourteen. <clears throat> Where the gates swing outward, never. 
naming him after me because I want him to be like me and I want to I want him to live I want my life to come through him and my whole mindset just completely changed and so I decided I was going to give him a Bible name um, now my reasoning and I've, I've talked to some of you about my reasoning on why I gave uh, wanted to give him the name Isaac Daniel um, there was some reasoning behind that but I decided to give him a Bible name Bible names so my mindset changed well I obeyed the gospel um, here in this building I was baptized here um, during the gospel meeting I, I think uh, Dennis uh, Folks was his name uh, was the preacher that was uh, leading that and Dale um, had this thing going where um, all the men would trade off preaching every fifth Sunday um, or every last Sunday of the month let's put it that way that was October 2002 my first sermon was the last Sunday of January, the very next Sunday, or the very next uh, January. So I didn't have very much time to think about this. I didn't have very much time to prepare before he said, um, guess what, you're preaching. And my first sermon was typed out word for word what I wanted to say. And that's not how speeches go. That's not how sermons go. Uh, it's an outline. Studied with me, and he had told me, you know, this is how it should be. Uh, this is how sermons are. But I was extremely nervous, and so I typed it out word for word. And um, I remember another sermon that I preached, like really close by that. It might have been, it might have been that first sermon. I can't remember, but it was um, preached um, the word or the truth. I think it was just called the truth. Um, and I always ask the question, what should I preach? And I learned the pre what should I preach is just the word preaching. And that's what I've been going through in these lessons here is a preacher should preach the word, plain and simple. And when we look at these verses, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 4, that's what we see in chapter in verse 2, preach the word. That's what Paul told Timothy is preach the word. He says in verse 1, I charge thee. See, we have to understand the personal relationship that Paul had with Timothy. Paul studied with Timothy. Paul um, was a mentor to Timothy. But there was more than that. They were brothers in Christ. And he's charging him. He's giving him advice. One that's older to one that's younger. And he's telling him, let's just read these again. He says, I charge thee. Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, it's it's almost like he's he's telling him, um, we're doing this before God. We're making a commitment before God here. Who shall judge the quick or the living and the dead? There's going to be a judgment day coming um, for the kingdom, for everybody. Verse 2, preach the word. And remember, we've talked about what a preacher is. It's one who heralds, one who proclaims the truth. And we've tried to make this distinction between um, a gospel preacher or one that we call a public preacher who comes up here to the pulpit and individuals um, in the within the church. Um, the, the one who comes up here and does the public preaching, we need to understand that this is a person who, first of all, just like an elder, wants to preach. We don't ever try to force anybody up into the pulpit. Uh, because that's something that should not be done. It has to be somebody who wants to preach. If they don't want to preach, then they don't need to be up here because they're not going to have their whole heart into it. Uh, but somebody needs, a gospel preacher needs to be somebody first and foremost who wants to preach. Um, but on the other hand, if we look at the definition, herald or proclaim the gospel, that's for every Christian. We should all want to. Let's look at it this way. Uh, if something good happens in your life, something you go to work and something good happens, you come home, you want to tell your spouse about it. You want to tell your children about it. We're all about telling about the things that happen in our life. 
Why don't we want to tell our friends and our family about Jesus? Why don't we want to tell somebody about this person who died for us? Why don't we want to tell them about this person who went to a cross that was willing to die for us so that we can have an opportunity at heaven? We don't want to take that time for some reason. We'd rather sit at home and watch TV or do something else. But we're all about telling about work. We're all about telling about this great thing that happened at the store or something else. But we don't want to talk about Jesus. But Paul is telling Timothy here, preach the word. And that's the gospel. Preach it, proclaim it, herald it. And he says here, be instant in season and out of season. That means when it's convenient and when it's not. What does that mean we have to do? That means we have to study the word so that we know what we're talking about when it's convenient and when it's not. Um, my brother called me um, yesterday and he, he called me and he said, I know you know about more about the Bible than I do. And so I, I wanted to ask you a question. And he said, um, when is the real Sabbath? And I knew what he was going for, but he was... Um, he was talking about how he'd been um, been told about how the um, the Sabbath has been changed to Sunday, but yet in the beginning God said to keep the Sabbath day holy. They, that God had worked um, the first day through um, through Friday, and He went through all this, and so we were studying about it. And He's at this Seventh Day Adventist um, church location right now. And so he's listening to these people, and he says that he really wants to know the truth, and he doesn't know when the Sabbath is. And so I was trying to explain to him through the Bible and just read these verses to him, and he kept getting mad. No matter any time I read a verse to him, he said, well, you're just trying to teach me your doctrine. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to read a verse to you. And just trying to tell you what God's word says. And so what we have to understand is just like the rest of these verses, there's going to come a time when they're going to listen to, people are going to listen to false doctrine. And they're going to just take what they hear. We have to understand that these false doctrine, these false teachers are going to preach louder than we are. And people are going to listen to it. There's going to come a time that we need to stand up and we need to be preaching louder than anybody else around us. We are being too quiet. As God's people, we are being too quiet. We are letting the false doctrine being preached way too loud all around us. We are letting the religious world preach way too loud. It's way too loud. <coughs> quiet in the Lord's church. We're not being loud enough because everybody around us is hearing all of um, anything that's contrary to the gospel and we're not being loud enough. Too many times we, we think it's the quote-unquote pul quote unquote pulpit preacher's job to do the preaching or the teaching. But we see all around us every time, every day, an opportunity we hear something and we think, that's not right. That's not right. But yet we sit by and we don't do anything about it. We need to be preaching louder than those around us. And some may think, well, I'm not a very good speaker. And we've mentioned this before. Let's turn, if you would, to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Paul has the most amount of writing in all of the New Testament. <clears throat> Paul was given the mission to preach to the Gentiles from Jesus, and he took up that mission. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6, and he says, But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. He was not a great public speaker. 
He had knowledge. He says, yet not in knowledge. He, he knew things, but he wasn't a great public speaker. We are not going to always be the best public speaker. But we should study enough of God's word that we should know how to speak to those around us about God's word. 2 Timothy 2, 15 and 16, give diligence or study to show thyself approved. If we study enough of what we're supposed to and when we're supposed to, then when we hear these things that don't sound quite right, that's false doctrine, we should be ready to stand up against it. We need to understand that we are in a battle. It's not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. It's all around us. Satan's soldiers are fighting. And we're standing there and we're letting Satan's blows take us. We're ready to fall. But we need to be standing up and preaching louder than all of those around us that are proclaiming false doctrine. Titus chapter 1 verses 19 through 13. We're not going to turn there right now, but Paul says, rebuke false teachers sharply. That means quickly. We need to do it quickly. How are we going to be able to do it quickly? It means we know the scriptures. We know how to go up against it. He says in Titus chapter 2, speak those things pertaining to sound doctrine. Again, if we're going to speak those things, we need to know about those things, so we have to study it. Show yourself a, as a model of good works to others. These are all responsibilities that Paul is telling to Titus and to Timothy of what preachers are supposed to be doing. We're telling to them that we're preachers of how they were supposed to behave. And again, this is to all Christians, not just to what we would commonly call pulpit preachers or public preachers. Turn, if you would, to Titus chapter 2, verse 15. Titus chapter 2. Verse 15. Paul says these things, and it's all these things that he's been teaching to Titus or talking to Titus about speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority all authority coming from Christ let no man despise thee if we are truly speaking and teaching the gospel to those around us we're going to be despised people are going to hate us uh, people are going to Maybe not physically, but um, they're going to spit at us. They're going to bite at us. Um, we are not going to be liked. And no matter how much, even if it's family and friends, no matter how much they love us, they're going to, in a sense, hate us because of the message that we bring. But we need to continue to preach or herald, proclaim, the gospel, because that's our mission. That's what we've been given if we have been obedient to that truth. We need to continue, no matter what. We need to be zealous or joyful about it. We need to have um, an energy about us that we're willing to do that. Like I said, when we have something good that happens in our life, whether it's work, or at school or whatever it is, we're willing to have a zeal and a joy about that, but we're not about Jesus for some reason. We need to have courage. We need to take up courage and strength to be able to preach for God. And I can tell you firsthand that when I first started preaching and even continuing to this day, when I get up to lead a prayer or to lead singing or even to preach, um, I still have jitters. I still have nervousness. Uh, I'll get knots in my stomach. Um, it's God's word that I'm preaching. And so I get this nervousness that I'm going to say something wrong. But if we're studying and we're doing the right things for God, 
that's all we need to worry about. If we make a mistake, somebody's going to catch it. They'll let us know. And all we need to do is pray about it. But we need to make sure that what we're doing is right. Paul told Timothy, as we read in our scripture reading, do the work of an evangelist. Proclaim that message. As we said before, the word angel just means a messenger. And that's right in the middle of the word evangelist. We are messengers for God. We are stewards of the gospel. We proclaim his message. And if we are truly doing the work of an evangelist, if we are proclaiming his word, that means we are going to study that word. We know what it is. And we're going to be ready to quickly rebuke those that are proclaiming false doctrine. So I'm going to end this here and let's be remembering that we need to be having our mouths ready and open to speak to those around us and proclaim loudly and louder than those that are proclaiming false doctrine. This evening, if you need to put Christ on in baptism or if you need the prayers of the church, whatever your need may be, we can help you with that. If you need to come forward, you can do that as we stand.